Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 547, Autoimmune Disease is One of the Top 10 Causes of Death in Women. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about autoimmune diseases and women and testosterone. Autoimmune diseases uh, are the one of the 10 highest causes of death for women, and that's that is actually information most people don't know. Women are, are um, affected more than men in terms of autoimmune diseases, in fact, quite a bit more. It is very common to go into an, a rheumatologist's office, which is the type of doctor that cares for people who have autoimmune diseases, and see 90% women, 10% men as patients. So it is something that's very near and dear to my heart and something I've been dealing with with my GYN patients for the last more than 29 years, and then for the last 19 years with my biobalanced health patients. So um, at first, when I was first trained to treat women with testosterone, it was uh, 2002. And at that time, there was very little discussion about how testosterone or estradiol uh, affected autoimmune diseases. The common thought at that time was, Hormones make autoimmune diseases worse. Well, we have many, many different kinds of hormones in our body. That does not mean estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. What they really meant to say was estrogen in an oral form makes autoimmune diseases worse. But that's not what they said. So it, it basically stopped all people, all women, from taking estrogen who had an autoimmune disease. When I started giving women pellets, I treated them for other reasons, reasons that had to do with testosterone, uh, helping them with their sex life, with their marriage, with their body composition, with weight loss, with being able to think better, all of those different things that testosterone does for women. But in about 2005, so three years after I started doing this, I actually saw a lot of patients who had autoimmune diseases, but I saw them for other reasons. I saw them for all of those reasons I just discussed and many others. So when I would treat them with testosterone and knowing they had an autoimmune disease, I gave them just a little bit of estrogen, I would find that they got better. They didn't need as much medication. Their progressive autoimmune diseases like MS stopped progressing. It was really miraculous, and it was something that I hadn't been trained with and something that I didn't have a lot of uh, scientific knowledge about, but it happened over and over again. So then I started going to the research papers, and I found research that showed that testosterone is one of the reasons men don't get as many autoimmune diseases because testosterone modulates your immune system and keeps the immune system from attacking you instead of attacking viruses and bacteria. So basically, this turned out to be something very unexpected, but something very positive for my patients who had autoimmune diseases. I reversed their disease. I got their medication to come down just by giving them the testosterone. Some didn't even need estrogen, uh, but many did need a little bit just to balance the testosterone to make them feel more like they did when they were in their 30s. So what really are autoimmune diseases? We throw that term around, but it's important to know that there are many autoimmune diseases, but what it really means is your immune system, and you have have immune substances, um, you have uh, actual immune cells that attack tissues or bacteria or virus or, or, or parasites. So we have many components to our immune system, But the autoimmune autoimmune disease comes when your immune system 
becomes directed at something that is your own tissue. So like rheumatoid arthritis attacks the tissues in your joints and uh, lupus often attacks your kidneys, could, can attack your eyes. I mean, there are many different targets for autoimmune diseases and that's kind of how we categorize them is what do they attack? And we've gone many years trying to figure out what starts this. Like anything else, you have a genetic risk for this. And oftentimes we find that it's in our family history that there's autoimmune diseases in our family history that actually go down from our great grandparents all the way through the female members of our family to us if we have an autoimmune disease. So it is genetic, but not everybody with the gene gets it. Then you have to have contact with some kind of, of target like bacteria, virus, um, a cancer cell even, that looks like your tissue. So your body's trying to kill something that is going to harm you, but it gets confused. And your immune system actually starts saying, well, that virus looked like your joint tissue. So I'm going to attack the, the virus and I'm going to attack your joints. And then it keeps going and it keeps attacking the joints until your joints are destroyed. And that's what happens in rheumatoid arthritis. So I'm trying to explain it as simply as possible. It is much more complicated than this, but this is the general idea. It's called friendly fire. Basically, we're shooting ourselves with our own immune system, and that is causing damage to our tissues and causing a disease. So what happens when your immune system is overreactive and, and um, their, its target is off? How do we fix that? Well, the current way to fix that is with something called biologics. It's kind of a misnomer. It's certainly not biologic. It is, but that's what they call it. It is actually um, chemicals that shut down your immune system. So not only do they shut down the overreactive immune system, but they shut down the immune system that kills cancer cells. They shut down the immune system that... Um, will kill that viruses or bacteria. So you're much more likely to get things that aren't common like TB or, or uh, viruses everybody else is exposed to. They don't get it, but you do. Uh, bacterial infections. There are many different things that you're at higher risk for if you take biologics. So that makes them very risky as a treatment. Um, I find this to be somewhat dangerous because a lot of patients who have been treated with this for an autoimmune disease end up getting cancer. And because you can't kill cancer cells if your immune system is suppressed. So I, I want to tell you a story about one of my patients. And she's one of my very favorite, sweetest, nicest patients. She was under 40 when she uh, had a virus and then had um, lupus. And it was a severe form of lupus that actually attacked her sight. It attacked her eyes. So she had, um, it also attacked her kidneys and a few other organs that were, that uh, made her almost an invalid. And then when she, when she saw me for the very first time, I was her last ditch effort to get her, her body and mind and, and, and marriage, sex life back. She wasn't really seeing me for her autoimmune disease. She was seeing me because she needed to have these other things that testosterone does. And she had had a hysterectomy early on in her 30s, and they'd taken her ovaries for, for good reason, but she didn't have any testosterone or any estrogen. So when she came to see me, she had been undergoing uh, shots in one eye, and she, in both eyes, but one eye had actually become completely blind. So she had some sight in her other eye, but she no longer could drive. She really wanted to maintain her sight. And we talked about testosterone helping her, her autoimmune disease, actually refocusing the immune system. So instead of your immune system going off and hitting targets they, they aren't supposed to hit, it actually refocuses uh, your immune system on actually killing cancer cells, killing viruses and bacteria. It does that for everyone, not just people on autoimmune uh, medication or with an autoimmune disease. But what our goal was, was to get her life back in order and 
try to stop this autoimmune disease. Now, I'd never treated uh, ophthalmologic lupus, and I told her that. I told her this would be the first time I've ever treated that particular type of lupus. And she was fine with that. She said, anything you can do to make my life better is all I can possibly hope for. Well, we were lucky and we were blessed because it turned out that um, when after she had had her first testosterone injection, or it's actually an um, implantation of pellets, um, she had been seeing an ophthalmologist every week, every week for um, shots in her eye of steroids to try to stop the process of the lupus, but it hadn't really helped until now. Well, she continued to see her ophthalmologist, but she didn't need the shots anymore because her vision stopped deteriorating, and she maintained that vision as long as she stayed on her testosterone, but she no longer needed the shots. Her ophthalmologist did his happy dance and claimed that he had cured her, but what he didn't really put any, um, any trust in was that testosterone had really stopped the process. So, but it had, because this was the only thing that changed in her treatment plan. But after six months, nine months, she had lost her 30 pounds. She had gained with the steroid treatments she had been given because she'd been given full body steroid treatments. She'd been given biologics, which had broken down her immune system. And she, she caught everything that she came in contact with because her immune system could no longer function. It was being suppressed to kill things it should kill and was not allowing her to be healthy. Testosterone changed that. Testosterone actually helped refocus um, her own immune system, modulated it, and she didn't need as much of the biologic as she had had before. So to me, that was success. She was happy. She had her sex life back. She had her marriage back. She got her body back. She was, she was back to taking care of her kids and, and back to living a, as full a life as she could. She still couldn't drive, but she was very happy with her progress. So this story doesn't have a happy ending. She had been on biologics before she came to see me, and she remained on them at a lower dose, but she still had a suppressed immune system. Several years afterwards, uh, after we had started treatment, she had continued treatment and was still very happy when she found out she had a cancer that um, not breast, not ovary, nothing to do with female parts because she didn't have it over ovaries or a uterus. She still had breasts, but she had, um, but it was a different type of cancer, and um, it it basically attacked her bones. And she came to see me after she was diagnosed, and we went over it, and and I was just so sad to see that the biologics had actually allowed this cancer to grow. I mean, that's. That's one of the risks of taking it. But it was, um, it was so severe and so aggressive that the cancer took over um, all the good things that we had done. But all she cared about was still taking her testosterone until she couldn't take it anymore, until she wasn't well enough to come to the office and get her, get her pellets. So we continued her uh, treatment with testosterone, which did give her energy and did help her through this process. But uh, her, her cancer was deadly and uh, did not have a treatment. So, so the end of the story isn't good, but it's not because of testosterone. It's because biologics had suppressed her immune system. I've had this happen with several patients who remained on biologics, and it's very frustrating to me because it is such a high-risk medication, and it should be really treated as such. I don't think people really realize how bad it could be if their immune system no longer works. Our immune system is the only wall between us and cancer, us and dying of a virus, dying of a, a bacteria, that our immune system is key to protecting us from all the things in the environment that can actually attack our system and, and cause us to die. So it is very important to keep it healthy. After I... Um, after I tr treated her, I decided that it was important to um, try to get people down as low as possible or off biologics 
with their testosterone, and that was the goal for many of my patients. I've treated people with fibromyalgia, with lupus, with rheumatoid arthritis, and with MS successfully. And with either with biologics or without as the only treatment, I've halted the progression of these diseases. I have not backed it up where people get back what they've lost. Your joints don't just miraculously come back, but you don't get more joint damage. The testosterone is very good at making your immune system not too overactive. And we even give it to people who have AIDS and they have an underactive uh, immune system. So it helps them come up to normal. And the people that are overactive, it brings them down to normal and focuses the target on the things that we should be killing with our immune system. Testosterone also gives people, women, protection. And it doesn't mean you'll never get an autoimmune disease if you have it genetically, but you may be able to, to not get it, prevent it in your body, in your lifetime. Uh, it actually brings you back to feeling like you did when you were young and the levels of testosterone that you had in your 20s and 30s. Therefore, you are not as high a risk as people who are over 50 who have not taken testosterone and who have not uh, uh, been treated for their uh, autoimmune diseases. I find that rheumatologists don't know the difference between non-oral and oral estrogen. And they find that if patients on estrogen, they think Premarin, they think Estrace, those are oral. And they don't think about the fact that we're giving uh, our patients non-oral, we're giving them a pellet that slowly dissolves at a slow rate of speed and a low dose, and it's just like their ovary used to work. It is not like oral medications, which change into many different things when you swallow them. Taking estrogen as a pellet is much safer than taking oral estrogen, but that difference is, is lost on many people in the medical uh, community. Basically, I try to give people as little estrogen as possible and as much testosterone as possible because that's, that is basically the mix that helps their autoimmune disease get better. I think that it's important to know the difference. It's important to know that you can have more help than just taking a biologic shot, that you can live with a better immune system and actually prevent some of these side effects or hope to prevent some of these side effects or lessen them or defer them that come with the, taking the medications that are out there and approved by the FDA for autoimmune diseases. So if you have this or you have a friend who has this, you should know there's something else. Now, I don't want you to go for oral testosterone or oral estrogen. You should find a form of non-oral testosterone and estrogen that will actually help improve your immune system and help improve your fight against autoimmune disease. Please share this with your friends who are affected. Have them watch this so that they can be well. And uh, please follow us on YouTube so that you can get our health casts every week. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.